Hello guys, let me <laughs> fix that. Are we straight? It looks straighter. Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're really going back to some old school the content bug slash Catherine videos where I'm not going to jump around as much. I'm not going to be doing as many like b-roll shots and making this as high production as I usually do. Instead, I'm just going to be bringing you guys behind the scenes. We're going back to the basics. I shared that actually in my last video. If you guys watched that last week, I am getting back to the basics. Today's video is going to be another episode in how the content bug does it and I'm sharing exactly how I edit my YouTube videos going through the step-by-step -step process exactly what I do and one of the questions that I get asked the most is how I create my overlays and I do stuff like that within iMovie so I guess that's the first thing I should talk about I do use iMovie to edit all of my YouTube videos so if you think that iMovie is too basic and that you need Final Cut Pro to get started on YouTube guys if you watch my YouTube videos there is so so much that you can do with iMovie and and I really just recommend that you get Canva. It's a free website. I use it to design all of my overlays and features and things that I include within my YouTube videos. Now I will say that I did pay. So I think I pay $12 a month to get the more advanced version of Canva. That way I can download images that have transparent backgrounds. So the video that we are going to be editing is actually the vlog that went live before this video. So I do upload every Tuesday and every Friday. If you are new to my channel, my videos on Tuesdays are more focused on YouTube tips. They're definitely more highly produced compared to my vlogs that I upload on Friday. They're still related to YouTube. It's more so behind the scenes business of YouTube, my life, what I do as like my job, all of that stuff. So the video that we are going to be editing is more so just like a productive work day at home since most of us are quarantined in our homes. I wanted to show you guys what a work day looks like for me, how I stay productive and just some tips for working from home. So this video as of right now, right here, you can see it, it is currently 58 minutes long. And obviously I have never uploaded a video that is that long on my YouTube channel. I've got a lot of editing to do to cut this down to about a 10 to 15 minute video. If it's more so 15 to 20 minutes, I'm okay with that. But still that's 30 minutes of footage that I have to cut down. So really there's a lot that I have to go through and you can see all of the clips down here. I've got a lot of them, honestly. So these little sections of me talking, I already did some of the basic cut throughs for this video, but I didn't go that far into it because I wanted to film this video for you guys. So some of this doesn't even make sense in order because I was filming some clips for this video. I was filming some clips for the video before. So my video about how to start a YouTube channel, I was doing that on this day as well. So some of these clips may not even make any sense and may not even be in the final video, but I just wanted to upload everything that I filmed on that day into this one project on iMovie and then I'm gonna go through it and figure out what I actually want. The first thing that we are going to do is I am going to go through and I'm going to do the simple cuts of the YouTube video. Now if you are brand new to YouTube my basic tip that I would give to you guys is take a look at your favorite creators and figure out what they are doing within their YouTube videos. One thing that I absolutely love is when people cut out their breaths or they make the video a little bit fast-paced and I get comments all the time saying that I talk too much or my videos are too fast-paced but honestly guys that's the video that I like to watch and those are the videos that I like to create. So one of the things that I do is obviously this video, I already have all of the, as you could say, like initial footage shot. I already have all of the vocals. What do I want to say? More so narrative. There you go. I've got the narrative already shot for this video. So I guess you could call that my A roll. So I just need to go through and make sure that it makes sense that everything flows together. Like when I'm going from one scene to the next scene, does it actually make sense? If it doesn't, I'm going to jot down some notes and figure out what I could add to make it a little bit better, whether that be an overlay or an extra scene, which this is a vlog. So creating an extra scene, it's kind of like lying because then that wasn't actually filmed on that day. And I don't love doing that, but for other videos, it makes a lot of sense. And the other thing that I'm going to do when I'm going through this is I'm going to cut out my breaths. Like I said, I do not like long breaks or when I'm thinking or trying to figure out what I'm going to say next, I do not like to include those within my videos. One thing that I absolutely love about my MacBook Pro that I have right here is within I'm movie they have got a split clip button on the cool toolbar I'll show you guys in the overlay. They've got a little split clip button and it's my favorite thing. Honestly, I thought once I got this computer, I was still going to do all of my editing on my big Mac, but I've been doing a lot of editing on my MacBook Pro just because I love the one click and then it splits it. But you do not have that option. Let me find, I'm gonna go like the whole way over here. So this little slider over here, I actually shared this in my other video, how I edit YouTube videos, which probably gives you more basic tips. So if you guys wanna check that out, I will include it 
right here for you guys, but this little slider, basically it condenses everything or it expands it. So it either gives you less detail or more detail. So when I'm pulling this out, it's just giving me more detail. And what I can tell right here, actually that's not a good spot. Um, let me scroll over a little bit and see if there's a spot where I can tell I'm breathing. So right here, if you look down here, this is actually the, guys, I'm not like super technical with it. What is this? This is like the audio level. I think that sounds good enough. That might actually be right. This is the audio level. So I can tell when I'm talking, when it goes kind of up and down, that's when I'm talking compared to when there's nothing. I'm not talking, I'm breathing, and that's something that I do not want in my video. So I'm just going to click on this right here. You can right click, you can click split clip, or it actually shows you the little keyboard trick shortcut that you can use, uh, which is what I usually do when I am on my Big Mac right here. But that basically just gets rid of the extra breathing that I do not like within my YouTube videos. So I am going to do that the whole way throughout this video. And I just know that there is going to be a lot, a lot of it. And hopefully I can get this footage down. So let me do that. I'm gonna honestly spend, ooh, one thing I wanna do within this YouTube video is figure out exactly how long it takes me to edit a YouTube video. So right now it's 9.39 AM. So I'm going to track exactly how long it takes me to do all of the little things within my YouTube video. So it is 10.55. I am marking down all of my times. So it took me over an hour and about 15 minutes to do just all of the rough cuts. And at this point, I have got a video that's 22 minutes long. So this is a longer vlog for me and I'm not sure, actually this is not manual focus. Was I in focus? I don't even know. <sighs> I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this being this long. I'm more so okay with my vlogs being longer. I don't mind that as much. All I did, I did the rough cuts of the video. Let me start a screen recording so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. That would makes sense, Catherine. Get it together. Okay, so these right here are all of the scenes that I have, all the rough cuts, and it looks like a lot. I'm not going to lie. And one of the comments I ended up getting in my video, that I don't even remember when I uploaded it. I feel like it had to be like October maybe, sharing some editing tips and how I edit my YouTube videos. One of the comments I got is, it's a lot to cut out all your breaths. And yes, it is, it truly is. But I just like the way that my videos are when I do that. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna start from the very beginning and I'm going to watch the video the whole way through, figure out what I want to add and as I come up with the overlays that I want to include I'm going to add them within my video and the very first thing my external hard drive that I have right here again I showed this in uh, my video of me getting my MacBook but I have a folder on this which I will share with you guys that is just called YouTube assets and within that folder I have a few different overlays that I've designed I have the music that I've downloaded from epidemic so I actually have just a folder in here of epidemic music and sound effects that I've gotten from them. Uh, but I do have this screen recording and this one. So one has a dot, one doesn't have a dot. And I want to drag and drop this because whenever I do like an intro scene, I want to have this recording that you see right here. You guys have seen that in several of my videos in the past. What I do, I will actually, let me expand this a little bit. So I will have the one with the dot be at 0.6, the one without the dot be at 0.4. And I've actually had people tell me that there's an easier way to do this. And I believe you, I'm sure there is, but within iMovie, if you want to have something that seems a bit animated, so let me play this for you guys. So you see that just like little dot, it's so simple. But if you wanna have something animated, what I've learned is that you just need to have different screens or different images over it and alternate or make it moving and that's how you make it moving but let me go through the video and as i come up with new things that i do i want to share with you guys exactly how i do that i noticed that i was doing something and i figured i should share it with you guys so let me start my screen recording yet again one little trick that i have for you guys if you are doing time lapses one do not abuse the use of time lapses if you have way too many in your video 
it's just going to be so boring. But two, whenever I do a time lapse, I will either do a small zoom in or a small zoom out. But I have this clip and it is a time lapse for 12 seconds. I don't want just the scene to be as is. I want to add a little bit of movement by zooming in in the editing process. So I went up here to this little crop icon. I clicked on Ken Burns and currently what I'm doing is I'm making it such a small little fade. I don't want it to be too dramatic because I don't want it to be that noticeable. It just adds a little something extra and it's honestly, it's not much at all, but I really, really do love the way that this looks. These are my blue light glasses, by the way. I will link them in the description bar down below. I just got them. I have this pair and I also have this pair when it comes to editing my YouTube videos, but this has like an insane reflection, so. Anyways, you guys didn't care about that. So I am at a point where I want to create an overlay or I want to include something within this video. So at this one point, I am actually talking about how I have an at-home gym and how I've been using my at-home gym. And I just filmed an IGTV house tour for my IGTV. So if you guys do not follow me on Instagram, I am trying to upload one IGTV every week or every other week. So you're basically getting one bonus video a week compared to YouTube. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. But I filmed a house tour, which includes scenes of my gym that I want to then incorporate over this video because I think it's going to enhance it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to projects, click on house tour. Okay, let's find the gym spot. So these two clips, right, that's not my gym. Okay, so these two clips are of my at home gym. I'm just gonna copy it, go to work at home. Okay, so we do have an at home gym. So I'm gonna copy those and I actually need to flip the footage. Okay, and I just, I, I'm so used to doing this, guys. I'm so sorry, I just like quickly did that. So let me flip this back. So the video right now is obviously on its side. So what I did, I went to this crop section and I'm going to flip it upright. The second thing I'm going to do is since I have this video on top of this one, and I could actually pull this up to show you a little bit better. I've got this video on top of this one. I want you to see both videos at the same time. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this top video. I'm gonna go over here, this option. And right now it's at cutaway. I'm gonna actually select picture in picture. I'm gonna drag this so it's bigger but I'm going to put this over here on the left-hand side, but then that is going to appear over there at the side. So one thing I wanna do, I wanna separate it a little bit from the actual video. So I'm going to click on this and it's just gonna create an outline. It's currently selected at black, I'm good with that. And one of my favorite, favorite tricks that I've actually shared this in another video before, but I am just going to copy this. And since I want this one to be set up the exact same way, everything I want copied. So I want the way it's cropped, meaning the way it is flipped, as well as the video overlay settings. So the settings on this one clip are selected. I'm clicking on this video. I'm gonna go up top to edit, paste, all. And over here on the right hand side, you can see the keyboard shortcuts, which is what I usually do, but I'm just gonna click paste all. And then what's going to happen when I play this it's just going to be the exact same. So it's going to appear in the exact same spot. It's going to be flipped the right way and it's going to look perfect and it's going to be seamless from one video right into the next. And it is seriously the best tip that I have for you guys. If you are doing crop like a zoom in and you want it to be the same for a couple of different clips that you have within your video, you can do the exact same thing for that. Or if you're doing color correction, game changer guys. Was my hair like that the whole time? Oh no. What is that? What's happening here? So far, I've shared two different types of overlays with you guys. The very first one is just my recording screen. It's something that I have saved on my hard drive like I showed you. The second one is including a video over a video, but one of the things that I get asked a lot is how I create my other screens. So, what I wanna show you is exactly how I do that. I'm at the point where I'm sharing the very first tip within this YouTube video, which is to go and work out. So I am going to go to Canva, of course, my favorite. I actually already have this pulled up. So let me show you guys what I have going on here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I have one file, which these look like they have nothing. If I actually add a background, you can see it actually has something there. So all of these have white text over them. You just can't see them at this point in time, but all of these are different overlay screens that I have used in the past or I plan to use again in the future. So I'm gonna use page 22 and page 23, and I'm just gonna tweak the text. I'm going to change this to move your body. And then this one, 
And you may be wondering what's the difference in these two. I feel like it's pretty easy to see even just right here. One is smaller, one is bigger. So one thing I like to do when I'm creating my overlay screens, I like them to have some kind of movement within them. So for this one, it starts out small. It's going to pop big and then it's going to go small again. And I honestly, I just like the look of it. So create some templates that you can use over and over and over again. There are definitely times when I design new overlays and it's a bit more work for me, but you guys know like my branding is set up in a certain way so that you you guys recognize things you know I want my videos to be familiar for you guys so whenever I have like an overlay like that I want it to be familiar so what I do I create these templates as I'm going along things that I can use over and over and over again and then it makes my editing process so so much faster another overlay example that I have for you guys is when I include let me actually just jump to the screen right now so you guys can see exactly what I am talking about I designed a little graphic that looks kind of like film but honestly does not look like film at all you know like I designed it myself and I wanted it to have that look and feel but I didn't want it to be 100% filmy and I want to show you guys how I create that as well as how I flip the overlay because this isn't an overlay that goes over top of my videos actually my video has to go over top of this overlay so what I'm doing right here I'm responding to emails so I'm gonna go back to this if I scroll down far enough, I've got this overlay already created. This is what it looks like. So it has my typical marble background, which you can barely see. It's just a white block. And then these are little bits of text. Guys, that's honestly what it is. It's so, so simple. But one thing you may not notice is that I change the numbers and the words that are included on this. And it's a little sneaky, but it's kind of for me. So I have to zoom in really close because this number up here, I actually make it the day that I recorded the video. So that's 26. And then down here, there's actually three. I changed this based off of the months. So I know 326, this was filmed on March 26. And then up top here, it always says 2020, or at least this year, it's going to say 2020. And then if I keep this going for 2021, I'll change it. Up here, I have what I'm actually doing. So I'm just going to put emails and then that is the overlay screen. And so far, oh, I just like hit myself. So far, none of the downloads that I have done have needed a transparent background. So from what you guys have seen, all that stuff you can create for free on Canva. Actually, that's not true. My recording screen that I designed, that is using a transparent background. But everything that I've actually showed you, me designing, you do not need an advanced version of Canva. You can get the free version. Okay, so we're gonna drag and drop this and that's what it looks like now i have all of these that i have fast forward so i made them into a time lapse that i actually want to drag on top of this so i'm going to bring it out i'm going to pull these up top here i'm going to adjust this because we only need it to that spot now obviously when i put this over this you can now not see the thing that i designed so what i have to do i'm going to select the first one i'm going to go to this overlay settings again we don't want it cut away we want picture in picture guys i'm telling you you can do so many things with iMovie. Perfect. I want it just like that. I do not want the dissolve again. So I'm going to make that zero seconds and then it's immediately going to pop up. So I'm going to select this. And again, I'm going to select all of these edit paste adjustments. We want video overlay settings, even though it could be all of them. And now the way it looks, it's going to jump and it's going to look like that. So clever, but so, so simple, honestly. So now what I'm going to do for the rest of the afternoon, honestly, this is going to be a multiple day editing thing. And I knew it was going to be, I actually spend two or three days on most of my YouTube videos. If I focused and I just worked on only this today, I know that I could get it done, but there are other things that I want to get done today. So I still am tracking my time, but currently I'm actually only 1136 into this video. So I'm about halfway through all the footage and I need to go through and complete all the overlays doing exactly what I already showed you guys with the different types of overlays that I like to create. And yeah, just work my way through the video and then I will see you guys back here probably tomorrow with like adding music, doing color correction and other things that need to get done for this video. So I will see you guys back here in like a second year time. Okay guys. Hello, welcome back. It is day two of editing. And honestly, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video in the next hour or two, at least editing wise, and then actually scheduling it. It's gonna take me a little bit longer, but yesterday I calculated exactly how much time I spent on everything. So doing the initial rough cuts, actually I did some of that before I even started this video. So I'm gonna bump this time up a little bit. Yesterday I worked an hour and 16 minutes on those rough cuts, but I'm guessing I spent at least an additional half hour on that another day. So I'm 
I'm gonna say like an hour 45 I spent on the rough cuts and then doing overlays, crop ins, like speeding things up, doing those zoom fades in whenever I'm doing time lapses, all of that stuff. There's a decent amount of work with my second round of editing that ended up taking me three hours. So, so far, I'm going on about five hours of editing this YouTube video. And I would say that this is more of a basic YouTube video for me because it is a vlog. I don't have as many overlays that I don't really have to think about my shots as much. It's just kind of whatever I got that day, I edit it down to make sense and make it a good video. The next thing that I'm going to do in my editing process, I am going to watch this the whole way through again. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to do some color correction. Now I used to do more advanced color correction before I figured out the settings on my camera that I actually like. Now that I really like the settings on my camera, I do very, very minimal color correction. And most of the videos you guys see now, I do not actually do any color correction. It's just the quality of the image that comes from my camera. Since I have so many different shots in this video, I'm going to guess that when I'm jumping scenes, either the lighting is going to change so maybe like the contrast is a little bit off or like there's too many shadows compared to highlights and I just kind of need to look that over and make some tweaks. So let me actually find a spot where I can share an example with you guys of what is going on. Okay, so this spot right here, actually you can see. So this clip, then going to this clip, this one that I'm currently on right now, it has a lot more color, more saturation. So what I may end up doing is this scene, bumping up the saturation. Actually, now that I'm just looking at it, I feel like it could definitely use some help. But then we go here and then from this clip, we drop down and this is a really, really dark clip. So one thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one, I'm gonna click on this little painter's palette up here. If you drag this, this is just gonna increase the exposure. Now I do not want the exposure to be too high because I don't want it to look blown out and I don't want it to be like the highlights are really popping and in your face. So one thing that I like to do, I like to take the mid tones right in the center here and I will drag them up to a point where I like it. So now I think that flows, I could still make it a little bit brighter, but I think that flows a little bit better. So we can actually see this is the before, that's the after. It definitely did make a difference in terms of the brightness. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to copy that one clip. I'm going to highlight all of these because I know they're in the same scene. We're gonna paste color correction. And now all of these will be the same. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna start at the beginning. I'm gonna watch this video the whole way through whenever I notice that either it needs a bit more saturation or change in like the lightness or darkness of the clip, or even when I'm switching scenes, if there is too much of a change there, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna make this simple color corrections that I just showed you. I'm telling you, I do very minimal stuff with an iMovie and I really do think it comes down to the settings on your camera. Okay, so right now, it is. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I started yesterday at 9.39. Today I'm starting at 9.42. Let's do this. And just like that, we're done. So honestly, color correction, it is 9.57 now. So that took me 15 minutes. That's not bad at all. The next thing that I have to do, and really kind of the last thing I have to do before I watch it through one more time, I'm gonna go to Epidemic Sound and I'm gonna pick the music for the video. My intros and my outros always have the same song every single time, so I already have that added to the beginning and I already actually have it added to my bloopers as well. But now I need to find the music that I want throughout the video, so I kind of have to figure out what are the clips, because I know there are certain scenes where I just have a little bit of B-roll and I want the music to be a little bit louder, and then there's a lot of just like background noise because there's a lot of me talking. So I kind of need to figure out the mood that I want for this video in terms of the music. And then I'm gonna go to Epidemic Sound, find some music and add it to the video. As a little tip for you guys, when you are adding music, you can add your music in two different spots within iMovie. They have this bottom section down here. And actually if I scroll over, I do have a song over here in this bottom section. One of the main reasons why I use that section is for background music. It's really nice because then the audio actually doesn't attach to your videos, a meaning that it no matter if you do extra crops or anything within your video like if you remove a whole clip that audio is still going to be there it's not like it's gonna jump and move around but there are certain points where I do not want the music to move around no matter what like when I am having b-roll and there's no sound and I want the audio to be a little bit louder that is when I move the music up here and this is actually going to attach to this video so if there's any changes to this video or any changes 
made to the ones in between of where I'm actually gonna have this be playing a little bit louder. That is when like, it's not going to move, if that makes any sense. Like this is going to attach to this clip and it's actually going to stay there. And I want that for this specific part because right here, you can see there's no audio in these clips. So I'm gonna want this raised a little bit louder. And actually what I'm gonna do, I'm going to end up cropping, split clipping this. And I'm gonna raise this a little bit louder. So let's say to like 11 right now, I'm gonna have to see what it sounds like. And then this is actually going to attach to this clip and it's not going to move no matter what compared to if I actually had it in this bottom section down here and then I ended up deciding that I wanted to change the clips in the future, it could get moved around and then it's just more work that I have to do. Now, one of the reasons why I save adding music until the end is because I'm at the point where I already like the flow of this video. I already cut out every Thing I wanted to cut out so I know for sure like I'm gonna do one more run through after the music's added but I know that I already like everything in this video compared to if I added music a little bit too early I would end up wasting a lot of time because then I would have to change where the music gets louder where it gets quieter and it's just background noise and it's just more of a pain in the butt so I save adding music for the very very last step in my editing process it is now 10.41. So I spent exactly 59 minutes this morning working on this YouTube video. Is that crooked? I think it's straight. So a total, I ended up spending a about six hours working on this YouTube video, just editing it. And there's definitely more work that needs to be done in terms of creating the thumbnail, coming up with the title, the tags, the description, all of that stuff, adding ads. I mean, it is a lot to upload a YouTube video, but I just wanted to bring you guys behind the scenes, my step-by-step -step process when it comes to editing my YouTube video, it is currently exporting and I'm gonna do the following steps that I just explained to you guys. So if there's any other videos that you wanna see on my channel, I'm thinking about doing an updated video about how I edit my thumbnail and I can of course do ones on how I write my description or how I come up with my tags and really optimize my videos. I feel like it's been a while since I've talked about that. So if you guys wanna see a video on that, please let me know in the description bar, or not in the description bar. Please let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys back here on Tuesday with another video and on Friday with a vlog. If you guys wanna watch the video that I did edit, I will also include that in the description bar down below so you guys can watch that and see what my editing style is like. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys liked it. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye guys. Bored in the house and I'm in the house board. I want to show you, you guys, what did I just say? I don't like that. Oh, hold on, that's not good. That sounded like complete gibberish. There we go. She did say she liked this guy though. Are you a uh, here in? I didn't realize you were <laughs> I just needed the roll time lapse of me like doing this and I so didn't even realize. Like it didn't compute to me that you were over there. Mm -hmm.